We thank you, God. We thank you. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, God, for coming into your house once again. We say thank you. Father, we thank you, God, for just allowing us to be here safely, allowing us to have a mind, a will, and a desire to worship you tonight. Because, Father, when we think back over, oh, God, when we look back over our lives and we think things over, God, you truly have been good to us. So we say thank you. Amen. Father, we thank you, God, for getting us up this morning. Yes, Jesus. We thank you, God, for having clothes on our back and food on the table, God. We thank you, God, that we was able to open up our eyes today. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that you gave us activity in our limbs we thank you, God, for being gracious and merciful and watching over us. God, we thank you for the job that we have. And for those that may not have a job, we thank you, God, for just for supplying all our needs. Father, truly, you are a good God. You are a mighty God. You are a rock in a weary land. And, Father, we worship you. We adore you. We draw closer to you tonight. Father, we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Now, Father, we ask you right now, God, that you will remove anything, God, that's not like you. Father, we pray, God, that we will be able to get things out the way, God, so that we will be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, you get the glory tonight. Oh, God, we love you today. We thank you, Lord God, for just making ways out of no way. We thank you even now, God, that we are healed. (laughs) By your stripes, we are healed. We thank you, Lord God, for the word that's going to come tonight. Oh, God, you said man can live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, Father, we pray even now that you would touch your manservant, that he would have clarity, that you would give him boldness, God. You have not given us the spirit of fear. But power, love, and a sound mind, God. Father, we want to be transformed today. We want to be more like you today. Oh, God. So we, oh, God, we we yearn for you, God. We're chasing after you. And we love you, God. We come to worship you and praise you and magnify you. Bless your people on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Come on and clap those hands if you love Jesus. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. Everybody, come on. So we lift our hands as we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Come on, let's just invite them into this place. Oh, Lord, you're welcome. Welcome into this place, Lord, you welcome, welcome into this broken vessel you desire, desire.
as we offer up, as we offer up the praise unto your name. Hey, welcome, come on, welcome, hallelujah, into this land. Come on. Into this broken vessel, you desire, you desire to abide, to abide in the praises, in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands, yeah, our hands as we lift. So we lift our hands as we lift Come on. our hands hand. as we lift our hearts. As we lift our hearts. We lift, we lift, so we lift. As we lift yeah. our hands as we lift our hearts. As we lift our hearts. saying he is worthy to be praised anybody come to praise the lord hallelujah if you don't mind if you can stand to your feet and just worship with us come on praise the lord with me come on Come on and praise on and the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Come on, everybody say, Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Let's sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Come on and clap your hands with me. Hey. Clap your hands with me. Everybody come on and clap. Your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Let's sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, how many know that's the highest praise? Hallelujah. He 
is worthy, he's worthy. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen. Come on and wave your hands with me. Hey. Wave your hands with me. Everybody come on and wave your hands with me. Wave your hands with me. Let's sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give them the highest praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hey, hallelujah, he's worthy, he's worthy, hallelujah, yeah, hallelujah, listen, come on, let's dance before the Lord, dance before the Lord. I see you, elder. Come on and dance, dance before, before the Lord. Lord. Dance before, before the Lord. Lord. Let's sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's raise the roof. Hallelujah. 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 Let's do that dancing. Come on, let's dance before the Lord. Hey. Dance before the Lord. Dance. Before the Lord, dance before the Lord. Let's say hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody, come on. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Yeah. Everybody clap like this. Everybody clap those hands now. Everybody do your dance now. Come on, let's give him the glory. Come on and tell your story. Everybody clap those hands now. Everybody do your dance now. Come on, let's give him the glory. Let's sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, everybody. Hallelujah. He's worthy, he's worthy. Come on, clap those hands, clap those hands. Everybody clap those hands now. Everybody do your dance now. Come on, let's give him the glory. Come on and tell your story. Everybody clap those hands now. Everybody do your dance now. Come on, let's give him the glory. Let's sing hallelujah. 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 Everybody, everybody, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hey. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many free? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody free? Amen. Ain't nobody scared that people watching you while you praise God? Because you know you're not ashamed of the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Because he's been that good. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. I'm gonna clap a little 
louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna sing a little louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna jump higher than before. Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna worship you more than before. Oh, 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 oh. Everybody say. I'm going to worship you more than before. I'm going to spend wilder than before. I'm going to worship you more than before. Everybody say. Let's say that again. Hey. I'm gonna clap a little louder than before. I'm gonna sing a little louder than before. Come on. I'm gonna jump higher than before. I'm gonna jump higher than before. I'm gonna spend a little while than before. I'm gonna jump higher than before. I'm gonna worship you more than before. Everybody say freedom, freedom, freedom. Come on, this. Of the Lord freedom, is there's liberty. Come on, freedom, 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 freedom. freedom. This is the part freedom, I like. This is the part I like. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Anybody happy to be free? Come on, sing it with me. No more, no, no more, more shackles, no more chains. Come on, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Come on, sing it if you really believe it. No more shackles, no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Praise him. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. How many know God is good? Hallelujah. You ever thought about where would you be if you had not had the Lord with you? Think about all the things you've done when you could have been exposed, but somehow, some way, he covered you. Somebody say, he covered me. Hallelujah. And he changed it. And he turned your situation around. How many know he could turn it around? Hallelujah. <laughs> Where will I be? Without you, hallelujah, where would I be without you? Come on, open up your mouth and say, where? Where would I be? Without you. Where would I be without you? You make my world go round. <laughs> you make my world go You make my world go round. When it was upside down, when it was upside.
without you. How could where would I be? Without you. Listen, cause you make my world go round. Hallelujah. You make my world, you make my world go round. When it was upside down, when it was upside down. Come on, everybody, come on if you believe it tonight. Come on. When it was upside down, when it was upside down, yeah. you make my heart sing loud. You make my heart sing loud. Yeah. You make you make my heart. Sing I cannot breathe. I cannot breathe without you. I can't. I cannot breathe. Hallelujah. Without you. Where will I be? Come on, give him glory, give him glory. Come on, come on, come on. Give him glory, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Hallelujah, give him glory. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give him glory, give him glory. No, give him glory like you love him. Give him glory like you adore him. Give him glory like you appreciate him. Give him glory like you would be lost without him. Give him glory. Like you would be abandoned without him. Give him glory that without him you would have no hope. Give him glory that without him you would have no peace. He's our joy. He's our comfort. He's our help. He's our friend. He's our God. He's our consistency. He's our peace. He's our everything. Oh God, oh God, what a wonderful God he is. What an awesome God he is. What a magnificent God he is. What a glorious God he is. What a phenomenal God he is. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory to your name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We honor God and his precious son, Jesus, the presence of his Holy Spirit. Everybody, everybody on your feet. Everybody on your feet. Come on, deacons. Come on. Come on, deacons. Come on, deacons. I'm going to ask you to get yourselves ready for offering. Praise be to God. Whatever the Lord has purpose in your heart to give as we give him glory, as we give him honor and ask if you would just prepare yourselves. Hallelujah. Uh, we'd be lost without him. We would be abandoned without him. Hallelujah. Without God, I'd be nothing. Yeah, yeah. Without him, I would fail. Without him, my life would be drifting. Just like a ship without a sail. Hallelujah. Praise, praise, praise be to God. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you glory tonight. We bless you on tonight. And we acknowledge your presence in the room. Fathers, we bring our offering before you and our gifts of love, expressions of gratitude. We thank you for finding us when we were lost. Thank you for caring about us when we didn't even care about ourselves. Thank you for seeing to our needs and blessing us to have our desires. Thank you, Lord God, for being our sufficiency and for being our provision. Lord God, we are lacking in nothing because you are our God. 
You're a faithful king. You're an awesome father. You're an amazing friend and a very close brother. Thank you. Hallelujah, God. So as we bring our expressions of worship to your altar, we thank you for the bills being paid. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the food in the cupboards, God. We thank you for the water that's running out the faucets, God. We thank you for the cars that brought us here, the buses that brought us here. Thank you for the gas and the gas tank, Lord God. Lord God, we may not have everything we want, but we have everything that we need, and we thank you, Lord God. And so, Lord, as we put, Lord God, our offering in the basket, God, thank you for multiplying it and using it for the advancement of your kingdom in this house. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Starting in the rear, we're in the hands. And all the time, God is good. And all the time, church, our God is good. And all the time, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Hallelujah and be glad in it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Indeed, we, indeed we honor God, his precious son, Jesus, in the presence of his Holy Spirit. It's glad to be in the house of God one more time. Amen. And good to be in the house, good to see the saints of God, and glad to see the Lord has brought you, brought you through yet another day. Amen. 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 Elder Adams, God bless you, man of God. Good to, good to see you. Good to see you. Are, are you ready for the word tonight? Amen. 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 I, I thank God for, like I said on Sunday, all the, all the help that I have in the house. I thank God that no matter who gets up, the Lord speaks and he blesses. God is just gracious to this house, and um, I am so ap appreciative. I thank God for our friend and our brother on tonight, Elder Newman. Um, I'm not even quite sure how much he remembers. I'm sure he probably does, but my mind goes back to when I was a sophomore in high school, and I was at uh, my aunt house at the time. She was an evangelist. Now she is Pastor Kelly of Blood Covenant Church, and I was in her basement at prayer meeting on a Thursday night, I believe. And that was the night I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, as my King. And I believe that was the first time I met him. I didn't know who he was, but as I was going in, he was in the prayer meeting, praising and blessing God. As the saints would say, I was coming through. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Some of y'all don't know what that mean when I came through. But yeah, that's when the Lord got a hold of me that night. And I haven't been the same since. I haven't been the same since. And I just thank God how every, everywhere down the road, he just puts people in your life that when you look at them, you remember what God did for you. And he was just in the back just clapping and praising God as I was accepting my king. And... Um, been knowing him ever since. So I thank God for him being a man of character and a man of integrity. Uh, he loves the Lord. He doesn't believe in playing with God. And he is uh, gifted and he is anointed. And I'm just glad that God has seen fit for this season of his life and this season of his ministry to walk with us. Amen. Amen. So if we can just, if you don't mind, just one more time, let's stand to our feet and receive our friend and our brother, the elder Randy Newman. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Truly give an honor to God tonight, who is the head of my life. Truly, I thank and praise God for being here, being here at First Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. Have you heard? My ear just popped open. And I said, Father, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to use you here one day. to us, to deal with us, to speak to us, and truly it is an honor to be in this house, even the house before uh, Newman Era at Temple of Prayer. I do give honor to First Pastor Drayton here, of course, been knowing him for 21 years. I met him in 93, and he's always been a good friend, but now he's my covering, so you have the deceitful friend from covering, so if he give me a rebuke, it's to bring me to the next level, but I respect him for that. 
Amen. And of course, New Monera at Temple of Prayer, Bishop Dwight E. Brown, he's both of our coverings, my, our bishop. So we honor him in his absence tonight. And truly, Sister Janice in her absence and the rest of the Drayton family, I do honor all of you. I thank you for coming out tonight. It's a privilege to be asked. When your pastor asks you to bring the word, uh, count that a privilege because usually the pastors do most of the preaching. But I, I like to hear a pastor preach, but I'm glad he asked me to, to minister. And truly, that is a blessing. I don't take that to be in vain. And I thank and praise God for being here tonight and in love and memory of my parents. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Miss Minister and Mrs. Uh, Randy and Jackie Muhammad, they both are deceased, but they gave me their blessings before they left. So, and being prophetic, I knew both were leaving, and I knew and I seen that, and that was not very comfortable. That was not very comfortable at all. But I missed them, and I loved them. And two mentors of mine, um, Prophet Floyd Brown from Chicago, Illinois, and Evangelist S.E. Reese from Bethesda World Harvest Church over there on Main Street. I missed them both. They, I sat at their table and listened to them, and they laid hands on me. And truly, they're vessels of a, the Most High God. But I thank and praise God for being here, and I truly love the Lord tonight. How many love him, just really love him, love him for who he is? And that song said, where would I be without him? I would be a hot mess. It would be a hot mess. It would be ugly. Still shaking activator all over people and trying to dance. And that's not very nice. But <laughs> I thank and praise God for where he's brought me from. Uh, brought me from. Uh, I wasn't the one to go in the club. I tried to walk in the club and walk back out the club. God was like, that's not the place for you. But walked into church and got saved. Uh, September 12, 1989 is when I accepted Christ and gave my heart to him, received the infilling of the Holy Ghost. But enough about that about me. Uh, we're going to break the bread of life. And truly, I thank and praise God for who he is. Um, I'm going to pray first because I want to be in line with the word of God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I humble myself before your throne giving you thanks and praise again for another day that you've allowed each and every one of us to see. Thank you for life, health, and strength, and thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your kindness and your compassion. Thank you for keeping us throughout the day in spite of the hardships we go throughout the day. Lord God, the attacks, the warfare. Lord God, but you're able to fight and win every battle and win every war on, on your own behalf because we're covered in the blood, Lord God. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord God, because most of all, you are our Savior, and you are the head of our lives. Thank you for bringing us here safe and sound, protecting us from danger seen and unseen. Thank you for the angels of the Lord that encamp around about us. Thank you for the angels of the Lord that fight in the spirit for us, the warring angels, and keep death away from us. God, we say thank you for that tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for the activity of our limbs, life, health, and strength. We count it a privilege that no one has to assist us, but you help us to get our clothes on, to wash our face, to get ourselves together. Each morning, your mercies are new every day. And the old psalmist song said, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. God, I thank you for your sweetness. Thank you for loving us unconditionally, because if it wasn't for your love, none of us would be here. You sent someone to witness to us, and we accepted you as Lord and Savior. Went down in water baptism and received the infilling of the Holy Ghost. God, we thank you for that today. We honor your holy name and we give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will be coming to you from the book of Luke, the physician. St. Luke chapter number 8. And 8 always represent new beginnings. New beginning. St. Luke chapter number 8, verse starting at verse 43 down to verse 47. When you have it, say amen. And I still hear pages turning. Verse 43 through verse 47. St. Luke chapter number 8. And a woman having an issue of blood for 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came, beheld him, or behind him, and touched the borders of his garment, and immediately her issues of blood was snatched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied Peter, and then that 
were with him said, Master, the multitude have thronged thee and pressed thee, and sayest unto thee, Who touched me? Verse 47 says, And Jesus said, Somebody have touched me, for I perceive that the virtue has gone out of me. And when the woman seen that she was not hid, she was trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched and how she was healed immediately. We're going to stay right there. Amen? You may be seated. And as I begin to deal with this text, we, we're going here and we're going to deal with this. We're going to put on our spiritual caps and, and deal with this particular text. The woman is healed by Jesus, our Savior. That is the topic. The woman is healed by Jesus, our Savior. But as we look into this particular text, we have to go back to a place called Jerusalem. He is in between Galilee and Jerusalem where he is at the age of 33. And the ministry has taken spiritual height. He's, uh, as we would say, in the spirit like an airplane with a pilot. And when you're in an airplane, sometimes the plane wavers back and forth. But this plane seems to go on a spiritual level, a spiritual height, where with the pilot is Jesus. And he takes us to certain levels in height in ministry. Now, he's at a height of a deliverance ministry. He's sitting among 12 elect, chosen, even a betrayer, even one who's rebellious. We know him as Peter, the bishop. And we know that Judas was in the midst of him as well. And as he sit among these 12, he's beginning to teach and elaborate on the word of God. And they are teaching up under his anointing, his priestly, kingly anointing. And those are different types of anointings. But as he's teaching, he's teaching parables and symbols, but with an understanding. The gospel is very simple. Even as a child can understand that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. But as he sit under this type of teaching, we sit on uh, Christology of who he says he is. We sit up under him with humility and we sit up in, under him with the love of God. And we also sit under him where which he has character. He loves all. Remember, he sat with an adulteress and ministered to her. You have to deal with unclean tools, unclean people when you are in the ministry. And he's making this, these illustrations among the 12 because this is the last scene of where which he is. The last scene of teaching these 12 because when he leaves, the comforter comes behind him. The comforter comes behind him. But as we look, deal with this particular text, we want to walk with humility. We want God to really use us. We want to be like that plane that soars in the air. We want to be like that car. Car represent ministry. We want to be like that family van. This is a family's ministry. All those type of vehicles represent ministry. Boat, ship represent ministry. And you have to take spiritual flight. You can't always be traditional in ministry. This is more than a traditional church. This is a movement, a movement where which God has released a fire upon the pastor. Sometimes we go on assignment and then we don't want to go, but God has to release us. But as we deal with this, this woman is being healed by our Savior because all of us needs a Savior. Most of us in here are already saved. He is our Savior. He does love us and he wants us healed. But as he teaches, he teaches with an understanding. Jesus, human and divinely called. That's who. The other note, when, A.D. 60, 63, where? Galilee, between Galilee and Jerusalem. And we know that there's a new Jerusalem that he's preparing for us. And it says, why preparing to uh, disciple these disciplines with the, uh, the divine journey? He's disciplining them because he's getting ready to leave the scene. But he's also teaching up out of the handship of the government of God, where which is a new beginning, a new movement. Now you have to remember his father is God. Genesis 1 and 1 goes back to the beginning. You have to remember his father, God, is gifted. This is the same God that sits on the throne and creates heaven and earth 
within six days. If the father is gifted, then you know the son is gifted. Uh, go back to Genesis where which he creates and he's given us dominion, power, and authority. Jesus is teaching with power, force, and spirit. He's teaching very clearly. Always remember, the father's gifted, the son is gifted. If you look like your father, then you take on your father's traits. You take on your father's ability. You take on your father's uh, facial structure. You take on everything that your father once did. Sometimes we take on our father's bad habits. But as Jesus, as Savior, he's teaching on and, and taking on this ability to walk with power. But our sister here has an issue with blood for 12 years that represent the, the government of God. But as we deal with these issues, there's another woman in Leviticus, and you scholars know what I'm talking about where the woman had the issue of blood in that, in that area, where which she had children. And before they can be declared healed in the Old Testament, which is under the mercy of God, they had to release a turtle dove or a pigeon before God. But it had to be a priest that was before them. After she had her children, if it was a boy or a girl, they had to go before a priest. And Jesus Christ is a high priest. But as we deal with the priestly anointing, they had to release a turtle dove and say, declare she is now clean. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying to you? They had to get the priest and say, listen, I just had this baby, but I need you to release a turtle dove into the midst of the air and declare my cleanliness. Because I don't want to go into all the sisters' details. Help us, Lord, help us. Uh, if they're considered unclean after having children, they cannot be in the public's eye. That's old school teaching. You cannot come into the public until uh, three months or four months later. Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 12, verse 6, 7, and 8. But this woman here had an issue. She sought all the physicians. Now, some of us, we go see the doctor, and we love our doctors, but you pray before you go see the doctor. Your trust is not in your doctor. Your trust is in God. Even though God made your doctor, you don't put all your dependency upon the doctor. We know Luke, the doctor who's writing this, and then we know Jesus, the chief doctor, who's never been to school for medicine, but his blood still cleanses. His blood still works. You can touch his, his veins and they still purify. Everything you used to be, whatever type of issue, you've ever wrestled with, when you get in contact with Jesus, he makes you whole. If you ever called on the name of Jesus in the midnight hour, he'll come to you. He'll heal you and make you whole. But this woman had a problem. She had a serious problem. And, and, and when a woman cannot be fully developed like she was, back in that day, they would remove her from the public eye. That's considered uncalled for. Uh, uh, we never heard of a woman having this type of issue with blood. We never heard of this woman being locked down in her house and not fellowshipping with the community. Back then, in this text, they would stone you if they heard of this type of ology in this type of woman. But they spared her. But in between her coming out, she hears about the name of Jesus. Now, she sought many physicians. She sought so many of them. Listen, she needs, she's becoming desperate. When was the last time you became desperate? And you needed God heal, to heal you. Desperate measure called for desperate times. She sought many physicians and spent all her expenses, her money. I don't care if it's green card, benefit card, food stamp card. She spent all her expenses. She gave all her money up to the natural man, the natural doctor, but never healed. I will become frantic and broke. Can you imagine spending all your living expenses from basic necessities, from dry cleaning, from food for the house, and you're never being healed? You will become distracted or puzzled. 
But as she sought this, these physicians, neither of them healed her. Now, you know when you go to the doctor, he's going to give you five bottles of pills and tell you to take them. Take this. This is going to bring down your blood pressure. Take this. This is going to bring down your cholesterol. If you got glaucoma, go to the eye doctor. He's going to give you four drops. And if you go to this doctor, he's going to tell you this one. And this doctor is higher than this doctor. And they both come up with the same pattern. But your trust is not in those doctors. Your trust is supposed to be in Jesus. Sometimes, if you look in the doctor's office and look on the wall, it says practicing doctor, practicing physician. So what they're doing, they're practicing on you. My mother told me before she died, she said, son, listen to me. Every pill that the doctor gives you, you don't take. I said, mama, what you talking about? She said, listen, I'm old up in age. Don't you take those pills. I can remember picking up my mother's prescriptions. Fifteen bottles of pills. And she said, I dare not take one of these. She only took four. She did not trust what her doctor told her. Her doctor is in God. God and doctor are two separate people. But as we deal with this, she was never healed. Never healed by the natural doctor. When you go in, you go in praying, not to your doctor, but to God. Every pill that they give you, now they have a book on pills. And they'll tell you the reaction of every pill. I'm still having a problem taking high blood pressure pills. I'm, I'm really having a problem with that. And I told my doctor, you switch this pill one more time, and I'm going to switch doctors. <laughs> now, you keep playing with me. Now, Randy, you're not going to come in here and talk to me like that. I said, I'm grown just like you are. Now, <laughs> 45, yes, sir. Now, came behind him and touched the borders of his garments, and immediately her issue of blood was snatched. She came. Now, look at the press. This is a pressing walk. If you've been a Christian more than 10 to 12 or 15 or 30 years, you will know that this Christian journey is a pressing walk. The just live by faith. Now, she hears about Jesus, but there are crowds. Now, he's at a spiritual height where the multitude is coming behind him. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, people are going to send for you, sis. They're going to send for you. Say, we need you to come over here and preach. We need you to come over here and do this eulogy. We need you to come over here and read the scripture. When you find out how gifted you are, your phone is going to ring a lot. When you find out how gifted you really are, they're going to send for you. Sometimes they just want to use you and not really use the gift. Can I be me? Prostitution is not just in the world. Sometimes prostitution can be in the church. Sometimes they want to prostitute your gift mm -hmm. and tell you what they're going to give you, give you what they want you to have. You count it, it's not what they said. Well, you know, that's still a pimp. We're going to be praying for those type of people. I've been at this 20 years, I know. Mm -hmm. But when you are anointed of God, they're going to seek you out. Seek out your gifting. Seek out your calling. Seek out how your characteristics is. See what type of gift that you carry. They're going to seek you out so they can destroy the anointing. Have you ever had a dream about oil in a bottle? And I dreamt this before. I was going to visit a particular church, and I'll get back to the text. And I asked God, I said, God, what is this type of spirit in here that when I walk in, I feel a heaviness in my belly. I said, Father, that don't feel like the Holy Spirit. And he said, Randy, it isn't. He said, I'm going to take you into a dream, and I'm going to show you what that is. Went to the church in a dream pattern. Pastor Drayton, you know how I dream. Asked God for three days, what type of spirit is this? Walked in the dream, clear colored. If it's colored, John Paul Jackson tells you it's from God instantly. Walk in the dream, walk down the center aisle that I always have. They was getting ready to pray for the people. And the pastor pulled out the oil, and it had dead bugs floating at the bottom. 
And I said, Father, what are you saying to me? He said, Randy, they have polluted the anointing. They have dead bugs in their anointing. He said, come away from there. And I haven't been back since. When you are gifted, understand the magnitude of who you are. It's not you, it's the Christ in you. If they sought to kill Jesus, they will seek to kill you. The anointing is expensive. It's costly. It moves. He moves. But the Holy Spirit has discernment. Mm -hmm. You can even sense and smell sometimes. An apostle told me last year over the telephone, he said, Randy, hear me. He said, now you're prophetic. He said, but in this season, you're going to recognize the smell. This man is from the deep south of Alabama. I walked into a church service. They was jumping over every pew, tearing the house up. And I happened to go up to the front and sat in the front row with the preachers. And this smell, I said, oh, demons are here, aren't they? My friend said, don't you start, don't you start. I said, well, you shouldn't have brought them in if you don't want me to start. I said, there's some demons up in here, and you're jumping all over the place. I said, Father, what is this? They said, oh, the number, go back and sit in the back because you're doing too much. I said, well, you shouldn't have invited me to come. Mm-hmm. Now, she touched the borders of his garment. We wear robes for Holy Communion. The borders is at the bottom. But even when you wear certain pieces and clothes, they have a certain symbol, Pastor Drayton, which we already know. Robes have a symbol, whether they be white robes, gold robes, Black robes, blue robes. Well, red represent the blood. Light blue represent the heavens. White represent righteousness. Black coming out of darkness. They all have a symbol. But when she touched him, immediately she was made whole. The anointing that's on your lives leaves an imprint in your clothing wear. An imprint. If you're anointed from the very bones in your body, the anointing rests over you. There was a woman that was sick with cancer in in, uh, another state. I can't remember the state right now. And she was sick with cancer. She didn't tell anybody. And this friend of mine named Apostle Lloyd Benson had his robe dry cleaned or pressed. And she worked in the cleaners. And she looked at the tag and took the plastic off. She didn't tell anybody. And she didn't tell anybody she had cancer. She put his robe on instantly. And she said, she told him, I felt a virtue go through my body. She went to the doctor the next week, and the doctor told her, there's no cancer in your body. Whatever anointing is on your life, it destroys yokes. It destroys yokes. It moves out every sickness, every disease. She was healed. She touched the borders of his garment. And the blood was, that blood issue was snatched out of her. Snatched, removed. She didn't have to go back to the doctor then. Healed instantly. When was the last time you were healed from a common cold? When was the last time you laid hands on yourself and the pain moved? When was the last time you was oppressed by a demon and a headache and you touched your temples and the spirit uplifted? When was the last time you called on Jesus? And he answered your prayer. When was the last time you went into prayer and cut off the TV? Prayer is becoming so sacred now. You have to cut off the TV. You have to cut off your laptop, the telephone, the cell phone. Cut away the saints so you can get healed. When was the last time he touched you? You, we, We stay at the doctor's office. But when are you going to get in contact with Dr. Jesus and allow him to heal you? We pay the doctors enough to get healed. They always ask me at the doctor's office, can we have your Medicare card, please? I said, I'm really getting tired of you people today. Leave my benefits alone, please. Thank you. Don't touch that today, please. And Jesus said, and he said, who touched me? Now he recognizes that the woman touched him. When you are anointed, you have to remember, you contact different types of spirits, whether they are good or evil. He asked her, who, he asked, who touched me? 
And when all denial, Peter and them that were there with him said, Master, the multitude have thronged thee and pressed thee. And thou sayest, Who touched me? You have to remember when you are anointed, people are going to start coming after you. They're going to thong and press you for some for a good reason and some for a bad reason. They're going to try to sift the anointing that's on your life. Watch out for family, relatives, church folks. Some people just want to touch you. Oh, Elder Newman, you're so anointed. I like the way God uses you. Why are you touching me? They're going to come and try to touch you and sift the anointing. Pastor, they can't wait till you go to that door. I got to touch them. Sifting the anointing. But if you have a spiritual sense inside of you, God would allow you to see they had touched you, but their motive was wrong. The Holy Spirit sometimes whispers to us and tells us, you can't hook up with them because they have a different motive. They want to cut down your anointing. If people are calling you every day a, a prophetic word or complaining or murmuring, they're trying to sift the anointing. If you are under the TV all day, that TV is taking all the energy out of your body.